In this video, we're going to be putting in the Hobby Wing Fusion SE. This is the 1800 KV 2 in 1 ESC end motor crawler setup from Hobby Wing. We're going to be putting it in the Red Cat Gen 9. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Troy. This is Roadside RC. You'll tend to find me bashing or crawling or drifting or racing, plus doing product review videos and how to's. And today we are putting this Hobby Wing Fusion SE 2 in 1 unit in my Red Cat Gen 9. I'm going to get the body off i'm going to show you everything that it takes to get the factory esc and motor out and then what it is to get this installed fortunately red cap makes this rather easy on us at the very beginning here one and a half millimeter driver and we take this one screw out right here with that off this slides out and it gives us access to both motor mount screws right here with those two motor mount screws out now we kind of run into an issue it can't physically come out of there there's no way to get it out so we have two options which is either to remove the two screws on each side so four total screws that hold this in except the shocks are in the way so six screws total there i think what i'm going to do is just flip the truck over and i'm going to take the four screws out that hold the servo in that'll let the servo drop out of the way and the motor should be able to slide out well, I'll be danged. That didn't work either. I ended up taking the two front screws out of this cross member. And then at that point, there's enough room to actually get it out. Unplug the two motor wires here. So the motor is now completely free. And then all we have to do over here is take a flat blade screwdriver or something to pry with. And you can get right in underneath the ESC. It is just held on with some double-sided tape. And at that point, the only thing left to do is come over and unplug the ESC wire from the receiver extension. With that now all done, we're gonna hop this Fusion SE out of the box. You will find inside is the motor itself with the power switch and the battery cables. It also has a extension lead and then the manual itself, which we'll have to get into because there will be some tuning that we need to do. Because the system is so simple, we're actually just gonna start by sliding this in and we'll route all the wires up there. I now have the motor just temporarily bolted in here. I reused the factory pinion. I did not put Loctite on any of this yet. I do highly recommend always putting Loctite metal to metal, but my guess is I'm gonna have to come back in here rather quickly and change this pinion gear out. Since this motor is only an 1800 kV, I expect that this will be really slow. And so this is, we're just gonna have to give this a test and then come back in here and judge how much bigger of a pinion we really wanna put on it to get that extra speed otherwise i have the wires coming over here to the side and this is going to end up being this wire over here is going to plug in for the receiver we're going to use the zip tie that's provided from the kit to actually tie it up with all these other wires to keep it free of any of this linkage and then i have the power switch and the battery wires coming in on this other side again we're going to tie them up here on the chassis to keep them free and then we'll put the power switch probably over here on this side of the chassis somewhere easy to get to and easy to pull the plug to get to the programming side when we get into programming the esc it's now time to fire it up for the first time so we're going to turn the controller on i'm actually doing this with the vehicle off the ground just in case uh, anything does go wrong with the initial uh, setup or initial turn on, don't want the vehicle to be able to run away on me. So we're going to, at first, just power it on. We counted cell voltage and everything. Now we have not calibrated this to the throttle at all. We're just gonna look at first for direction. And that is good news. So um, it does immediately actually turn the correct direction clockwise or counterclockwise for this vehicle. That is good news. That is definitely a good sign for us. That means, but it is a programmable item in the ESC. So if you do need to change it, you can do that. Now that first time I ran it, you might've heard it was kind of loud. That's because I had the, I had actually had the gear much too tight. 
just back the gear mesh off just a slight amount and now it seems much much better so before i start programming anything else we need to actually test drive the truck first and then we're going to come back in and actually do some programming here maybe adjust some of these parameters using the hobby wing program card and that'll help us just do a overall kind of fine tuning for the esc setup let me go ahead and get this cover on so i don't eat up any wires It is all buttoned up, installed, zip tied in, all everything's done. So we're going to go out and give it a quick test drive. Back from the test drive, we are now gonna jump into some of these programmable items that are here because there's a few things that I believe I want to change on this based on that first test drive. The truck did really well, uh, but two things definitely that I noticed. One was the drag brake rate. And so that is how fast does the drag brake kick on when you let off of the throttle? It seemed like it came on really, really fast, which meant that the truck had a lot of like, you know, herky jerky stopping whenever you let off the throttle i would like to decrease that drag brake rate so that it more gently came in the second thing is i don't like what hobby wing does with their foc throttle control where basically you hold the throttle in one spot and it'll ramp up or down the power to the motor to help keep the rpms of the motor tied to the throttle i'm not a big fan of that i i, I for two reasons mostly it doesn't feel like I'm driving really the vehicle. It feels like it's on cruise control and I don't have to monitor what's happening with the truck and either throttle up or down based on the terrain. And then two, I don't like it from like a durability standpoint where, you know, if I'm in, if I get the tire stuck, if I get the tire wrapped up in something, I'm not going to know that it's bogging down because it's just going to automatically ramp up the throttle and I have a higher chance of actually breaking stuff. So I want to turn that off and I want to turn the uh, lower the drag brake rate. And while we're in there, we're gonna look and see what else is there that we might wanna tweak. It's honestly rather easy to program these things. The program card does not come with this uh, unit, but if you've bought any other Hobby Wing stuff, you probably got one at some point. I think I have like four or five of them laying around. Um, you're gonna ignore the words that are on the box itself, and you're just gonna pay attention to the item and value versus the instructions for the uh, actual ESC and motor that we're dealing with. You plug it in here to the power switch, hit the power switch, it powers on. So the first thing is we have the RPM throttle matching enabled. So I am going to go, one is enabled, two is disabled. So I'm gonna do that. And now that is disabled. Lipo cells, if we go to the next one, is in the first position, which is automatic, which is exactly what we would want. Cutoff voltage 
is set at medium, which so far should be fine. ESC thermal protection is all the way up at 105 C probably should be okay. Motor rotation, we forward was forward and reverse was reverse. So we're happy with that. So we do not need to change that one. The next one, number six here is BEC voltage. So if we actually go to the next value, then that will actually up the voltage that we're giving to the servo. And so that means it'll actually strengthen the power that we have to the front wheels. I'm not 100% sure actually if this uh, factory servo will take the 7.4 volts, but we're going to give it a shot. I have spares if I need them. Drag brake force is currently at level four. That is item number seven. Um, option five is level four it's it might be a little confusing sometimes um but i was fine i think with the total amount of drag brake that i had so i'm going to leave that there so setting the drag brake rate is option number eight we are going to move that down to like a two from a five to make it slowly engage the drag brake and then lastly here is item number nine which is max reverse force and we do want reverse at a hundred percent for the crawler so we are okay with that and at that it cycles all the way back around to number one we've gone through everything here in the instructions this should be a better setup for this crawler so that is how i have installed into the red cat gen 9 the fusion se two-in-one motor combo seems like it's a great unit and we're going to be very very happy with it if you are trying to install it and you have any questions feel free to put them down below i think i'm going to get into messing maybe with some different pinion gears to see if i can get just a little bit extra wheel speed back you could tell that uh, it was just a little bit slower than it was from, than the uh, factory setup so I'd like to see if I can up the pinion a tooth or two and uh, get me some extra wheel speed. So if you have any questions or comments about this install, if you're trying to do this and you have any questions, feel free to post them down in the comments and I'll be happy to help however I can. Thank you and goodbye.